In this video, I'm going to be doing a complete build from beginning to end, as well as including software of my highly recommended live streaming dedicated PC. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. So I've had a lot of people on here on YouTube as well as the Facebook group for me, um, media ministry group, have asked me to give tips and everything about the live streaming systems that I recommend so much for the churches that I consult with. And what I decided to do, because I'm building a new system for a church that I'm going to be installing a video um, sound system, complete overhaul of their sanctuary. I'm taking all the parts and building the system from beginning all the way to end, installing the software. And I did that on Facebook as a live stream. So I'm going to edit a lot of that stuff down, but offer that to y'all as well too, who may be interested to see all the parts, how I put everything together. And that's about it. So be warned, this is a long video. I will put timestamps where things need to go. Um, so you can jump to it and see where everything is. And like I said, we're going from hardware, putting the system together all the way to installing the software, configuring OBS, everything. So let's go ahead and cut over to that video. Again, long video. <laughs> so this is the motherboard I'm using. Later this week, they're actually coming out with the B550, which would give more features. That's what this system will be upgraded to moving forward. But I do have a B450 for the 4K system, and it's gonna be for this live streaming system. So, I am using a Ryzen 3 3200G. That is for CPU and GPU is built in. Have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 um, memory at 3000 speed. You could probably get faster, but this is fine for this setup. I am also using a Decklink Mini Recorder 4K as our capture card. Find somewhere. I'll just leave it in the box. Using two hard drives, we have one, and it's not, oh, this isn't an NVMe. This is just a regular M.2, which I'm disappointed in. This is probably not going to work, so I'm going to have to return this. This stinks. So this is the wrong drive, so I'm probably going to use the drive that I already had. I know I picked the NVMe. So I'm going to have to return this and get an NVMe drive because I don't think this slot will work with that. But I will try it anyway. If not, I'll return it. That's going to be my application drive. Then I also have a regular mechanical drive, a two terabyte for local storage. If anybody wants to record the stream like what I'm doing right now and need to save this because this is what we're going to put that other drive in. No, the smaller one to return. If it does not work, let's set that aside. And we also have a 500 watt power supply um, to power everything. All right, like I said, um, that's the only thing that's there. Oh, and the other thing, Anthony, this is for you. I am also using the Fantex P300 is my case. Oh. So let's get this stuff out of the way and make some space here so that I can put everything up here and put stuff together. All right, so let's go ahead with the simple stuff. Let's go ahead and put our memory in here. Now, normally there's a bracket here um, that comes with it, um, the motherboard, but I took that off because the processor has a fan like this that screws directly to this plate that is on the bottom that holds this in place. So I take out these top brackets here 
that normally are for fans that clip on, but those are not used with this one. We screw straightly down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our memory here. Normally with these, you wanna skip these. It's inside the manual and these are in dual channel memory. So I'm gonna use these gray ones here. And there's only one way that this goes in. Don't force it. You'll hear the clip on both sides. Next one. There, straightforward. All right. Like I said, I think this is this drive will not work. I will find out once we start to install the operating system, which you can get from Microsoft. Just go look up Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, um, get a thumb drive, and it will install everything on this. And that's what already has this on here. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Let's save this because I might need to return this. And you can tell the difference because of the notches in this little drive. So you see it has two notches in this. So this is just a, um, let me see if I can get in focus there. So it only has two notches on there. So that's not an NVMe. This one that's from the 4K system is an NVMe, as you can tell, because it's only one notch in there. And it's even designed this way on here. So I, this is actually the, the um, drive I normally use, but I picked this one up because Newegg was talking about it's on sale and I didn't pay attention to it. But as you can see, hopefully I can zoom in so you can see, as you can see, there is a, a notch right there on that side right here that's for that drive. So I'm gonna see if it'll work. If it doesn't, like I said, I'm gonna have to return it and get another drive, which should be fine. I should have enough time to do that. But let's go ahead and try and, let's go ahead and connect this one for right now. And there's a little screw in here that we need to take off. And if this drive was bigger, you could move this screw and move it to one of these places here. I really hope this works. But like I said, it's not a big deal. If it doesn't, I can just go ahead and return it and get another one. All right, let's go ahead and screw that one back in. You don't need to over tighten this screw either. We just need it to be there to hold it in place. All right, cool. Um, let's protect this drive for right now because ultimately what I'll actually probably do is keep this drive, move it to something else, another system at church or something like that, and just buy another one. And the one that's for the 4K system, I'll put in here and I'll just buy a new one for the 4K system. That's what I think I'll do. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our CPU here. And again, this is the 3200G. These uh, updated version of this, the 4000 series, I believe it's called, should be coming out later this year. And if it's at the same price, I will move to that. So it comes with a fan. Here's the processor and a little sticker. Now I always put the stickers on the cases. So let's go ahead and open this up and be very gentle with this. There's a little arrow right here in this corner and there's an arrow on the processor as well too. I don't know if you can see that right there. You just gotta line those up. You don't have to force it, it just drops in. If you have to force it, you have it in the wrong direction. And don't try and touch the pins on the bottom. Just line that up and see, and it just drops right down Put the, push the little handle down, boom, there you go. Now, I normally put thermal paste on the bottom of this, but based off of what this is gonna be used for, I don't need to do that because the fan actually has thermal paste on the bottom. 
So let's go ahead and screw these in. And for any musicians out there who are percussionists, drummers, whatever you want to call yourself, we're going to follow that same methodology and screwing this down so that it's even. We're going to go in a um, opposite type of direction. So let's start over here. Give it a couple of twists just so we get engaged. Let's go to the opposite corner. Couple of twists, go up, couple of twists, cross, make sure it's engaged, and then we're gonna repeat. And you can't over tighten this because it's gonna not allow you to screw any more at a certain point. Like right there, I can't screw that in anymore. That one is there, that one is there and that one all right so now this needs to be plugged in this is the cpu fan there is a header right here this is cpu fan and i think a couple of people on the group were asking about this sometimes this comes with four pins sometimes it's three it doesn't really matter whichever one just line it up where this little uh, place is here you'll see that so it lines up and we'll line it up there on the CPU one. All right, straightforward. Now we have our drives. Now, Anthony, this is for you as well too. These are right here, the connections for the motherboard to the case. And as you can see, it's silk screened. If I can get it in focus there, I'll probably superimpose a picture over it where you have to connect the pins that come from your hard, I mean hard drive, from your case onto that. So let's set this aside for a second and let's get our case prepped. Let's get our stickers out the way because we're going to add that last. Oh, let's take this off. All right, so we have our IO shield here. I'm gonna set this inside of here. All right, that's all in there. Let's take this other side off so we can put our power supply. It doesn't really matter the order that you put this in. Um, I'm just used to how I normally would do it. So I'm gonna actually do all of the power and stuff later. So inside of it, we have these standoffs here that are for your motherboard. And this is actually an ATX case. It can fit that, but our motherboard is smaller. So we need to move some of these pins. I mean, these standoffs. So let's get this and let's find out where these are. So as you can see, we need to move one of these standoffs to right here and right here. And maybe another one right on here. Nah. So we need to put one right here and then one right there. So let's go ahead. Now I heard so many people talk about this iFixit kit and I bought this thing and I love it. Um, all of the parts are magnetized, makes it super easy and it's made mainly for computer parts, building and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and undo this. Man, that's tight. There you go. All right, so we're gonna move this one to right here. Now, 
I'm actually, let's, let's do this smarter. We're not using these standoffs, so let's just take one of these. I'm not trying to twist my wrist out of the place. We can use this to reposition the one that's needed. So I like this case mainly because, I mean, anytime I build a computer, I try and look long term. Granted, like the small systems that I build, like the ASRock A300, I build that for the sole purpose of that is meant for live streaming only. And that's not all the way in. That's really tight. But like this type of case, if you decide to get a bigger motherboard, you don't have to replace this. You can just take the other board out and put that in. All right, so that's there. I'm gonna leave these here because there's no point. It's not like it's gonna affect anything. All right, so we're gonna line all this stuff up. Let's slide it in there and then the pins line up right there. Now, I messed up with something here. This case actually has all of the extra parts and stuff in the front. And I didn't take those out. And that's here in the basement here. This comes with the screws and everything like that that you need. And I'm gonna leave this out because I need this for the hard drive we're gonna put in there. So we got all these little parts here. And that gives you some more instructions for the case if you needed it for that. But that's fine, I'm not really gonna need that. So let's get, mainly we're looking for the screws for the motherboard and everything like that. So let's dump those out. And normally it's these of what you would use. And the good thing is since we have these slots open, we can test this out on one of these other standoffs to make sure they fit and it does. So let's go ahead and put these in place. There's actually another hole here for the motherboard, but there's no other standoff placement for um, that. So we're just going to use these ones here. And it looks like I missed a slotted one. Strange. No, that's there. I don't know what happened. All right, so let's go ahead and, and you don't have to over tighten these either. Just want to make it sturdy so it's not sliding all around the place. Uh, let's see. A couple more in here. But as you can see, I mean, it's plenty of space if you wanted to add a bigger hard drive in here. And that's kind of, I mean, hard drive, a bigger motherboard in here. And it already has a fan in here, which is cool, but you could always do water cooling if you wanted to. You can put a radiator right here and it loops over. You could put another fan up here if you wanted to. But in this type of situation, I don't think that is needed. This is more than enough because I don't have any external um, a discrete graphics card that's needed for extra airflow and nothing like that. But it's good to know that I have plenty of pl spots available to put that stuff in if I needed it. This one's not catching.
cut it. Oh, it's not catching. Let's try this other one here. All right, that one's good. So let's try a different screw here. Oh, I see what it is. This cable got in the way. Just a little bit. There we go. And I like the iFixit stuff because all of this stuff is magnetized as well. Because I've done this so many times <laughs> where one of these screws has fallen in here and you have to lift the whole case up and flip it over. All right, so there, we're good. Now let's go ahead to our capture device, Blackmagic Mini Recorder 4K. And because the GPU is on the CPU, we can, I was gonna say you can pick any slot, but this one actually is a certain size, so you can only pick between these two. And because nothing else is going in here, I'm gonna use this top one. So again, HDMI in, SDI in, saves in the future. If you ever decide to go to something bigger and better for your capture device. So this one lines up with this IO plate here. Let's take this one off. I don't know why they tighten these so tight. It's like they're trying to stop people from even hooking this stuff up. Alrighty, just line that up right there. Alright, there it goes. It's seated. Now let's put this screw back in place. Alright, there we go. Now I gotta be careful not to throw away stuff I need to keep. So like this memory for the 4K system. All right, so here is the secondary hard drive that we're gonna put in this plate here. And we're going to, it goes inside the front of this this way and which way should we put it? No, oh, it already tells you because you the holes. So we got to line it up this way. So the cables are going to go out this way. Line those up. And this is toolless. So we just got to line these up. And then they just snap in place. All right, let's tip this over here. gonna slide this in so we could always put another drive in here if you wanted to boom slap snaps in place and I need to find my additional SATA cables let me go ahead and grab one of those so let's go ahead and we got to route power to this as well so we're gonna plug this this way and then loop it into this hole right here or you could loop it back under here if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna come back up into one of these holes for the motherboard. And I just moved OBS over here that I didn't mean to do. All right, so now we can pick 
any one of these SATA connectors. And again, there's only one way you can do it because there's a little notch in here. Let's go ahead and flip that. Let's just put it on this first one. There we go. Get rid of the access. We're going to hide that down here. Now, me, I don't like the red. Everything is black and white. So I need to find a black cable and I'll switch that out. That's what I'm going to change later. I know I have another one. Just don't know where I put it. And I normally have tons of these left over. Let's see, let's see, is this it? Yes, it is. And this is actually a right angle one. So this actually will probably make this a lot easier. So this is a right angle one and it goes straight. So let's do this in reverse. So unplug this, plug this one into number one. Let's feed this through. Got a bottom right here. Now, because of this, I'm actually going to feed this up under here. Let's get rid of this cable. I'm going to feed this all the way through up under this cage. All right, so now, as you can see, I'm coming up under here, and it's a right angle, so it sits very nice, and there's nothing out of the way there, so that's really cool. All right, so let's flip on the other side. Now, these cases have very few pins that you need to connect to the front. So we have our USB 3.0 cable right there. We have a fan header. We have audio for the headphone jack and stuff like that on the front. Have a power switch. And then also have a hard drive LED. And they have these little straps here that you can help organize your cables. So I want to see, I don't think this is going to be long enough to go in this direction. So I'm going to come up under here for these cables. And this is for the power switch and the hard drive light. I mean hard drive, yeah, hard drive light and the power button. And there's a bunch of other these. These are power. This goes to the LEDs that goes inside the system. So this needs to get power along with the hard drive. And we'll come back to that. This is the audio again. We'll push this up through this hole and the USB 3. We'll push it up right there. Let's strap these down for right now and fan header. We'll push right here for right now because we might have to change the placement of this because I don't think that cable is long enough. All right, so let's flip that over. All right, so here are all our cables. So silk screen on the screen, I mean, on the motherboard, like we talked about, is where all your placements and everything goes. So here's hard drive audio. Hard drive audio is there. It's a missing pin right here. And there's only one way this can go. That goes right there. USB 3.0. Let's move this around this SATA cable. And this is kind of tight. So I'm probably going to come from that hole right there instead. So that I have way more slack here. All right, that plugs in right there. And then we have our power switch which if you look on the silk screen, it's two rows of white cables. And this one is on the first row, starting at pins three and four. No, no, that's not the right number. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's six and eight. No, one, two, three, four, five, five and seven, excuse me. So that plugs right there. 
The other one is a hard drive light, which is two and four. So that goes right there. Now here is the case fan cable, but the other fan header is all the way right here. So what we need to do is let's pull some of these cables out the way. I'm gonna unplug this and let this go over top since I got so much slack here. And I guess I could have brought my audio up through this hole instead. Place that. Right there. So we need to reroute that cable because the header is all the way back here. So what we're going to do is let's fix this first. Pull these cables taut. So there's all the slack that's going to be inside of the case is taken care of. Yep, so we got that strapped back. This is fine. I'm probably going to strap this here to hold that up out of the way. But as you can see, there's a loop right here. So it's more than enough. This just doesn't need to go this way. And it's, the fan is all the way back here anyway, so there's no need in doing this. So I personally like using fingernail clippers because it makes it easy. Just make sure you don't snip one of the other cables in here because then you pretty much got to get a new case or ignore the stuff that you cut. All right, so now I have all of this. So let's feed this back through this position here. And here's our cable. And like, see, this one is only a three. And I, don't, I can't get this any closer. But see, this one is only three. And I'm just gonna set it where this notch goes over here. All right, so now our fan is there. And let's pull all this extra cable up out of the way. Flip that over again so I can make this all nice and neat here. I need to pry that up. Oh, I'll come back to that. All right, so that part is done. So now let's go ahead and add our power supply. All right, so we got our power supply here. It comes with screws. And I do not have a modular one, so we have all these extra cables that we need to get up and out of the way. I'm gonna like it when I have a studio because then these boxes of processors and stuff, I can start collecting so you can see <laughs> all the systems that have been built. All right, so here's our power supply and let me flip this around so y'all can see where this is gonna go. All right, so we're gonna put this in the basement right here. There is a filter right here. So the fan that's on the bottom needs to face in that direction. So let's set that right there. All right. Now this is gonna be weird for this purpose because I need to hold this up so that I can screw this in. Got our four screws right here. Get all this extra stuff out the way. This is where magnetic tools help so much. All right, so let's line this up with the holes on here. So right about there, we just need one so that it can hold it in place. I should 
did this with the other hand. So we get it right there. All right, there we go. So let's screw the rest of these in. Power supply is secure. So now let's flip this over. And now we have to start routing our power. So you can see we have all these connectors, which will help if we need to expand this. This 500 watt power supply is more than enough for the system. Um, I like putting the parts in PC part picker because at the top, it'll tell you the voltage of what you need. I mean, wattage that you might need. So let's filter these out. This is the main one for the motherboard. So we definitely need that. That's gonna go through this hole right here for right now. We're gonna loop this through the straps to hold that in place. This is, if we had a discrete uh, graphics card that needs power, that's what this would be. So I like to set this aside and this is gonna be hidden down here in this basement here, but I like setting that aside because that's one of the most common ones people would use. This is for the CPU that needs to be plugged in. So we're gonna route this up this side and have it go through, y'all can't see it, the hole right here. And we will strap this down to the side over here. Uh, let's get this out of the way. And then, now this is where we need to connect the SATA for some power. So we have this one for the LEDs. And honestly, since we only have one drive that needs power, and these are old Mullox connectors, we don't even use these hardly ever again, ever anymore. So we're gonna wrap that one up. And like I was saying, originally we only have two devices that need power. So we're gonna route this through the side. Well, actually let's use this side and connect the power to our hard drive in the front. So as you can see, we got power going in here and there's enough space because of the shroud that goes over the front, that that's not gonna be in the way. And then this extra one, that's over here, we will connect this to this power here. And again, there's only one way that these can go. So if it, it feels like you have to force it, you're most likely putting it in backwards. All right, so now let's clean up all these cables. And like I said, This one's not needed. We may need another drive because you can actually put an SSD on this right here and then power can go that way. And then this is the discrete graphics card one. And this is why I keep that wrap that it was originally in because we can just take that Okay, so Anthony, you're saying on the P350, the LED plugs in from the back of the box. Okay. Yeah, if you have these cables, it should be long enough for that. Um, you might have to play around with those. So I have enough space here in the basement. Set it right here and boom, there we go. And they come with these zip ties here. So I'm gonna start just placing these right now to zip tie this one over here. I'm not gonna pull it all the way closed yet. Need some slack. And 
and I'm putting this one at the top as well too. All right, so now let's flip this over and let's connect those. All right, so we have our main power here and why do I keep hitting minimizing OBS over here? All right, so what we're gonna do is let's line this up. The power is only one way this can go. And since there are no screws holding this in place, just be careful not to bend the motherboard too much when you're plugging this in. All right, that fits and as you see, we have more than enough space here. I don't want this being tight or anything like that. Now this other one, the CPU one, can only go one way too. Let's move this case fan cable out of the way behind these capacitors here. And there's a clip on this side. So we have to put this in a certain way. That's one, ah, they both came loose. Come on now, there you go. All right, now that's in place. This is in, I might wanna change this. Now this is the cable management part. All right, so everything inside of here is now plugged in. Now we just got to clean up our cables. And because we have more than enough space now, let's pull this in here. This will live right in there. This will live right there. Fingernail clippers, so let's cut this extra off. And this might be a little tight, but let's pull our main power under this Velcro strip. Man, I might need to. Get this one straight here. You gotta push through on the other side. There we go. All right, so that one's good. And y'all can't see that. So we're just putting this in here and then we're gonna, let me switch it this way. Fix this strap here. And let's pull all the slack off of these cables so that they are covered under here. All right, so that's tight. That's there. I could put something here, but this is more than enough. Everything's clear up out of the way. All right, so let's put this back plate on. Technically, you really shouldn't do this. You should always test and make sure power, all the wires and everything like that are set up fine. Um, but I've done this so many times, I'm 99% sure everything is fine. All right, very clean. Like I said, I could always put some more fans in here if need be, but don't really need to do that. So let's put our front plate on. And I have it upside down. All right, so there we go. And if we look on the back, here's all our connections. This is where we're gonna connect in and I'm gonna connect this into the ATEM Mini 
so mini pro so we can hopefully see what's going on here and let me get rid of all these screws and all this other stuff this is going to be the test that this hard drive works because if not we're going to be switching it out and this drive already has um windows installed on it because i did that that was for the 4k system so that would make that really easy but i want to show y'all how that will work and let's power it up because we need to go through the bios as well too so let's go ahead and we're tapping the delete button all right so the bios has been reset and let me move my stuff out of the way here so let's go through our settings here. Advanced frequency settings. Really don't need to touch that. Memory. Set it mainly to auto. Most of the stuff you don't have to touch. You only touch this if you really know what's going on. Hey, Brandon. Um, oh, that's not needed. Miscellaneous. Don't need that. Let's go to system. Firmware, I mean, the BIOS date is November 2019. We might need to check that to make sure it's fully updated. The date and time is correct. No, actually it's not. Because it's actually 1837 where I'm at. So that's 1837. All right. Let's go to a BIOS. We're going to boot. What we're going to do our boot. This is picking up our the SanDisk thumb drive, so that's good. The other drive, the Western Digital drive, is actually being picked up, but we're going to switch that to be booted next, and then the two terabyte drive. We really don't need booted at all, so we're going to disable that. The SanDisk is already selected. That's the USB drive with Windows on it. We're going to disable that. And do you want to have a full screen logo? That's your choice. I'm going to turn that off. Um, fast boot. Let's enable that. Um, all right. Let's go to peripherals. AMD CPU stuff. Let's go ahead and enable that. Initial display output PCI. I'm going to say no. We want to use integrated graphics video. Um, this one has LED colors on it. You can set the color right now. Um, I'm going to change this to blue because that's what the power button is showing right now. HD audio, that's enabled. All this other stuff is fine. Let's go to NVMe. Yeah, see, that's what, it's not showing as an NVMe drive. So that's fine, but the drive is showing up. So that's good. AC back. Now I always set this that if you lose power at all, because all of my computers are set up to be controlled remotely. So if we lose power, I want them to always try to turn back on. Um, that's the easy way for me to tell if power's back on. I do that here on my computers here. All right, so I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and save and exit. <laughs> All right, so now we're in Windows is being picked up from our thumb drive. Let's go to next. Install. And I didn't go through this process, but all of this is here. Yeah, I don't have a product key. I'll get one later. Windows 10 Home. Next. Now this is where it's going to find the, the hard drive. We want to make sure it's doing it. Yes, so we accept that. Next. I'm doing a custom. And now it's picking a drive. So it is showing the other drive in that slot. So I don't need to return it. So that's good. So I'm going to install the whole main operating system on the um, SSD. So it'll be faster. So I'm not going to make a new drive or nothing like that. I'm going to do that later. I'm just going to select drive one, enter. So it'll install everything here. And I guess I should do my mouse because I'm going to need this here in a second. Ah, wrong, wrong keyboard, hold on.
All right, so let me get back to where I was. All right, so we're here in the window setup. Hey, welcome Eugene. Um, so let's go through the window setup. I'm doing this without the internet on because it asks a whole bunch of other questions and it forces you to do a Windows account, which I do not want to do. So that's why I keep the internet off. Um, I should have actually left it on because it does download the most recent version of Windows 10 while you're installing it, but I just don't have a cable that's long enough to reach it right now. We'll do that when I move it back behind here. So we pick our area, no keyboard. This is where it would normally go out. See, it's asking for the internet. No, I don't have internet. No, I don't want any of your services. What's your name? I typically use media. Set the password to media as well too. And they change that once I install it. And I pick all the questions and the answer to each one is media. I just give them an opportunity to change this whenever they want. Last question. What's your childhood nickname? My childhood nickname was media. <laughs> All right, next. No, I don't want you to record my activity. No, I don't want a digital assistant. No, I don't want online. No, I don't want to find a device. No, I don't want typing. No, I don't want access. No, I don't want tailored experience. No to diagnostics, no to location. I turn all the stuff off and there's a whole bunch more stuff that needs to be turned off too. Um, all right, so we're here. I have this extension here. Now let's connect it to the internet. There we go. And if I move this up and out of the way, you can see here in a half a second, there we go. There's our internet. Yes, I want to do this. And so let me make OBS full screen here. So I can whew, see what's going on. All right, so now let's go through the settings that I normally do with OBS. We're gonna go to, let's turn off all this privacy stuff. <laughs> so here, um, privacy, let websites know, no, no, speech, no, ink. See, you said no, but it's back on, no. Diagnostics, when do you want to send them? Never. Ask before fixing problems, yes. Activity history, store my activity, no. Location, no. Camera. No. Microphone, no. Voice, no. Notifications, no. Account info, no. Contacts, no. Calendar, no. Phone calls, no. Call history, no. Email, no. Tasks, no. Messages, no. <laughs> Radios, no. Other devices, no. Background apps, no. App diagnostics, no. Automatic downloads, eh. documents, no. Pictures, no. Videos, no. File system, no. All right. Now, some stuff is not going to be available until I actually, um, and I'll actually go through the Windows activation too um, for those that want to know that. Um, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Well, let's go ahead and get everything else here. So let's go. First thing we need to do is get rid of this. We're going to go to Google and download Chrome. Yes. Let's close all this stuff. So we're going to install OBS. We're gonna install the capture, the drivers for the capture card that we just did. Might need to do an update on that. Um, what else? The drivers for the motherboard, graphics, which includes the encoder that's used for OBS. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and do a Windows license to get this stuff activated. All right, so now let's go over here to raw mouse. <laughs> let's go over here to drivers and we're gonna download the Radeon drivers first. Then we're also gonna install the chipset AM4 B450, Windows 10, and Windows is already putting drivers for me for the graphics card, but we're gonna be updating those anyway. All right, Live Magic Design. We're gonna go to Support, Capture, and it's 11.51. Let's go ahead and download that. Drop download only. So, before I do that, I just bought my license. So let's come over here. And I'm going to take this offline so y'all can't see the license I'm using. Let me activate this real quick. There we go. Windows activated. So we're good. All right, so now we got that activated. Let's go ahead and install our drivers. We're going to do this first then install OBS, then install our um, graphics drivers, and then install our DeckLink drivers. And then we should be done. And I think while I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and put on my stickers here for the case. There's two of them. The processor and then the graphics card all right it says restart i'm not going to do that let's go ahead now and install um, obs no i'm not going to install obs yeah yeah let's install obs oh, i was thinking And it's missing some files, so we need to install this first. Run. Install that, because OBS needs that. Close. Now let's run OBS again. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad it's helping. So we install OBS. Not gonna launch this, finish. <laughs> All right, so we got that installed. Let's extract the information for the capture card. Let's run that. This one definitely needs to be, um, a restart needs to happen after this. Now, while this is going on, let's go back to our settings and let's go look up power. Let's change our power settings. No, we don't want this to turn off. No, we don't want it to go to sleep ever. And we want to use best performance. Um, here's some other settings we can do. Let's go to accounts sign in options and I want to sign on information automatically finish your device and reopen everything that you already had I turned that off because that's annoying to me um, all right that's off driver is installed restart all right so let's restart that all right so let's log in 
You saw how fast that booted too. All right, so we're in here right now. So now let's go back and now we're gonna install the graphics software. Uh, and there's the capture card needs to be updated. Let's let that update. Now let's install the drivers as well. Those are two different things, so they're not gonna conflict with each other. Um, we're gonna install 20.4.2 because 5.1 is optional right now. So I think I have, I'm gonna try and hook my other camera up to this that wasn't working. Um, so that way we can see this whole system connected, live streaming, the whole shebang. So while we're doing this, let me take this. I'm gonna copy over the OBS bundle and we're just gonna walk through that as well too. I mean, we're already doing all this, so why not? So while we're waiting here, let me know folks, what other stuff that y'all want? Um, an install that I have, this church that I'm building this computer for, I'm actually gonna be installing the Behringer X32 Compact, the Digital Snake 16 channel. We're installing the ATEM Television Studio HD, um, hooking that up to a petite HDMI modulator like I've done before, which goes throughout the entire church. Um, what else? We're actually using a Sony 4K camcorder because the Panasonic's that I wanted were sold out, but the Sony ones were actually about $50 more, so we'll go with that. Also, I have another A10 Mini Pro that is coming in for another church. That should be here Friday, um, and we're going to be installing that with an HDMI extender with another Sony 4K camera. So that's gonna be hooked up into that system. They have a laptop that's gonna be connected to um, the A10 Mini Pro, and the output is gonna to go to four TVs inside of the church. Um, and that's, we're gonna be using the Ori HDMI over ethernet extender to go to all those locations. So that won't really take that long. The longest thing is really gonna take is running the cables through the drop ceiling. Um, but I would take y'all along with me. That is a project that's coming up. The other one is the one that's going to take a minute at Fifth Street Baptist Church in my hometown. Um, it really won't take that long um, because somebody else is pulling the cables right now. Um, so we've got everything installed. And while this is doing this, let's go ahead and open up our... Oh. Now is doing the graphic stuff, the black magic stuff. Let's look at the video. All right, so here's our card. Let's switch this to HDMI because that's how with well, this system is actually going to be connected over SDI, um, which I should have just left. All right, so we got this here. Everything is done. I don't wanna do that. Finish. All right, so now everything is installed. Let's go to OBS now. Got our GoPro HDMI, well, got a GoPro and our HDMI cable. I need power for this. All right, folks, we're almost done, almost done. So we have our USB powering our GoPro. We're connecting HDMI out into the HDMI in on our capture card, which is the Decklink Mini Recorder 4K. All right, so that's up right now. So now let's go through our setup in OBS. No, I don't want to do that right now. Uh, want to change? The, okay, yeah. And our OBS Complete bundle is on here, our thumb drive. 
So let's go through this whole setup here. OBS complete. Let's move that to, I'll do it in my documents because people keep saying that they have problems with installing this. Copy that. All right, that's all done. So now let's go through this entire OBS setup. So let's go to our documents where we did that. We need to rename this text file to a X, I mean JSON file, turn on extensions. All of this is in the instructions as well too. So get rid of the TXT, then JSON. Yes, I want to change that. Now in scene collection, we're going to do import. Yes. Select where that file is. Documents. There's our JSON file. Import. Give it a second. And now we have our media ministry stuff. So it's already here. So now, because we put it in a completely different location, we need to go through and map where all this stuff goes. Um, our intro was here. We need to point this to here. Boom, there we go. Our images, we need to do the same thing. This is the same thing for Mac, the exact same thing. Then 10. All right, so let's go to, let's jump to everything else before we do this one. Um, offering. I mean, online giving. Two. Three. Just pointing it to the new path, that's all it is. Four. And five. Be right back, the exact same thing. background image, then background music, now I'll skip that on here, no, I have the music embedded in it, okay, so be right back is done, ending, same thing, just point this to our outro, All right, so that's using the OBS bundle. So now let's come back over here to streaming. We're gonna get rid of this because we have a Decklink Blackmagic card. So we're gonna come in here to new and because if you installed everything in the right order, we have a Blackmagic device. So we'll just use that and point that to our stuff. We're gonna use HDMI. And of course, my GoPro wants to act up. And there we go. The GoPro is now being brought in 
and there it goes resetting again that's the gopro that's why i don't use this thing that much but you see we're getting picture in so let's lock that in place and let's actually move that down now that we're in offering we can get rid of this one and we're going to bring in the black magic that we already made and now we're going to move that to the bottom so that way you can hear what's going on as you can see you're hearing all the sound that's coming in since all the sound is coming through our capture device we're going to come into audio under the settings disable desktop audio disable mouse audio i mean mic <laughs> audio mouse audio um, so now the only sound that's coming in is coming through our capture card which in this setup with a switcher is perfect so now everything is set up live streaming by capture device um, oh let's go to our settings here and let's make sure we do this so stream we're not doing that we're gonna set this to hardware so it's using the GPU to do this I like to change this to FLV we're going to point this to, oh we didn't do our drive our secondary drive so let's cancel this real quick so we're missing our second drive that we have in there so let's hit the Windows key and the letter X and we're going to go to disk management over here and there's our other drive let's hit OK and we're going to right click on this make a new simple version yes we're going to give it Let's unplug this because we need this to be the D drive back. I unplugged the USB so it picks it up. And let's cancel out of this because it's not picking up that drive. New simple. Next. Next. There it goes. D drive. I don't give it a name. Quick format. Next. Finish. All right. There's our drive made. I'm gonna do a new folder called videos. We're also going to change this videos to the one we just made. So we go to location, find target. We're gonna go to our D drive videos. Let's copy that. Yes, I'm gonna move it. Now our new video drive is on the D drive, which has way more space. We don't want this to be on our main drive. So let's go to browse and let's now point, if you do recording in OBS, it's gonna to go to this drive. Select folder, boom, there you go. Now we might wanna play with these settings, um, but for right now, that's fine and we're gonna change this because this is capable of 1080p so let's switch that to that I'm gonna set this to 60 frames a second I'm gonna max it out and there we go so that is a complete <laughs> um, live streaming system install with Windows all the software everything now of course i'm going to run windows update to make sure that there are no other updates that need to go on actually let's do this let's turn off notifications i don't like that annoying stuff on here turn all that off focus assist don't need that as well all right so now now that this is done let's close this let's go to our settings and then let's go to our updates and let's run an update and then just make sure all of that is, make sure all of that is fine. We're just gonna let Windows run and then we are good to go. So thank y'all so much for <laughs> bearing with me through this whole thing. That is the complete process of what I do. This is the same live streaming system that I have in my church. I'm building this for a church, 
and y'all saw that this is working. It's working with my GoPro that just doesn't act right all the time, but this is gonna be connected to an ATEM television studio and we're gonna be going over SDI to that. So thank y'all, as y'all can see, I'm sweating like crazy. So we're going to <laughs> relax. Thank y'all for joining. And I hope that helped for those who are building. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> this is AJ, we'll see y'all later.